you ever think, geez, I wish I'd thought of that? Today's guest thought of it, acted on it, and is now making money from it. It being grip socks. Yeah, socks with grip. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show. Where successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. G'day listeners and welcome back to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Timbo Reid, but you, so much more importantly, are a motivated business owner ready to crank out some great marketing. And that is exactly what we do around here. Thanks to the very good folk at NetRegistry who get your online marketing sorted over at netregistry.com.au and Audible who has more than 180,000 audiobooks ready for immediate download. Get a free one of your choice at audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM. Big show today as per usual. I have a fireside chat with physiotherapist turned entrepreneur Luke Goodwin, who's created the Grip Socks. Yeah, it's another one of those damn why didn't I think of that story? It's a bit like uh, Scott Bucock of three or four episodes ago who'd improved the humble old clothes peg and is now making a whole lot of dough as a result. I share an example of uh, using Twitter to turn a negative into a positive, plus I share an inspiring marketing quote of the week to get you up and about. As per usual, team, there is marketing, G-O-L-D, Dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Do you need a speaker for your next conference? Recommend Timbo to your event organiser. Or better still, book him. Tim Reid. That's R-E-I-D dot com dot A-U. So I want to share this wonderful use of how Smart Car, the brand Smart Car, have used Twitter to turn a negative into a positive. What I'm going to play to you is actually the summary of this case study that they've prepared and put on YouTube. Uh, I've pulled the audio from it. It's pretty self-explanatory. Suffice to say, A, there is a language warning, so if you've got any kiddies about, skadoodle them off. Uh, And secondly, what it does do, it starts with um, a tweet that appears on the screen uh, uh, that says... Saw a bird had crapped on a smart car. Totaled it. That's the tweet. Now it falls through the sky and lands on the windscreen of a car and goes splat. Have a listen to this. When you are the smallest car in America, people talk a lot of shit about you on Twitter. So how do you change that? You fight their shit-talking with some of your own. We started responding to some of the haters and found one who took a shot at Smart's perceived lack of toughness. But what many don't know is that Smart's unique Tridian safety cell can withstand 9,000 pounds. So we did the math. We found that pigeons produce 25 pounds of poop per year, which means... Divide 25 pounds by 365 days and you get 0.068 pounds per day. Divided by approximately 37.5 poops per day and the mass of a single pigeon poop comes to 0.002 pounds. So take the 9,000 pounds of force divided by the mass of a single pigeon poop and you'd need the waste of 4.5 million pigeons to waste a smart. But what about the bigger birds? The numbers on turkeys and emus weren't as easy to find, so we called some friendly farmers and got the stats right from the source. We put it all together and sent our reply. Then the shit hit the fan. Our jokester blogged about it. His post got picked up by Reddit, where it hit the number one position twice. The next morning, it was making headlines around the world. Hey, makers of the smart car are winning a Twitter war and they're using toilet humor to do so. In less than three days, we generated over 22 million impressions, increased our Twitter mentions by over 2,000%, and as searches for Tridian safety cells spiked over 300%, the world discovered the truth about smart safety. Now, Smart's unique attitude is changing the minds of more and more critics while setting the new standard for how brands should interact in social. 
best of all, we're turning the shit talking into respect. Isn't that a great use of Twitter and turning a negative into a positive? So often we think that's not possible, but absolutely it is, and the, the publicity they got was extraordinary. A big thanks to Lindsay and Sarah over at The Great Changemaker for bringing this case study to our attention. Follow Timbo on Twitter at Timbo Reid. That's R E I D. He loves a good tweet. Right, let's get stuck into today's guest. It is Luke Goodwin. Luke, uh, at the age, of, right by the age of twenty-four, set up his first business, a physiotherapy practice. He expanded a couple of years later to start a brand new clinical Pilates exercise studio, um, and then over the past. 13 years, he turned that into a health and wellness centre in Brighton, in uh, very close to where I live, actually. So then in 2005, he, he invented this product called Grip Socks, and he's gone on to sell it into 200 retailers in Australia, United Kingdom, Europe, North America, New Zealand, Asia, Middle East, pretty much all over the world, and it is going from strength to strength. It's a great story of someone who was a service provider on the tools as a physio who has become well and truly an entrepreneur, and he's about to get off the tools and actually um, really focus his efforts on grip socks. All will become clear as you listen in. I start off by asking Luke, what's the hardest thing he's ever done in business? Pretty tough question. Um, I think probably setting up my first business, I'm a physiotherapist by trade. So when I first graduated, I was only probably out of uni for a couple of years and the opportunity just suddenly arose to or purchase the, the business that I was working part-time in. So probably making that decision to uh, jump in, you know, pretty fresh into it. And I think that was probably, you know, the best thing that I did in the end, just a great learning curve for me, but pretty difficult at the time. You were 24. What was hard about it? Um, I think just a bit of uncertainty, not knowing, first of all, you're still trying to find your way as a physio. So when you study physio at uni, obviously you come out and you haven't got, you know, the greatest skills. So you've got to learn that um, as you go. Mm. And then to be suddenly sort of the the boss and in charge of the actual physio practice, I think sort of working out how to take the practice forward while she's still, you know, working your craft as a physio was probably the hardest bit to get going. I find that interesting. Are you from a line of business owners or employees in your family? No, no, far from it. So uh, none of them have had their own business previously. So, and even at school, you know, I hadn't done any business subjects you know I was always in the science fields of chemistry physics biology maths that sort of thing so it was really sort of learning on the job and when you go to the uni to study physio you know they don't teach you anything about how to run a physio business even if that's where you're heading but um, it's more I think just jumping in and learning on the job. Mate that's well done for you to, to you for doing that it's, it's a big thing you obviously didn't give it a lot of thought otherwise you might not have done it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it, but as I said, it came sort of upon me pretty suddenly. So it was either, well, you know, if the business gets sold to someone else, I might be out of a job. So I might as well just jump in. As I said, I was working part time at this practice and one at another one. So it was more or less, well, you know, what I do, do I give up the other position that I had, you know, going and just run full time to this one? And I just thought, well, that's probably the way to go. Now, have you still, you've still got that practice and you've built it into a wellness centre, yeah? Yeah, so I started off just running a small physio uh, practice and then the opportunity again arose, funnily how things turn out, but um, had the opportunity to set up a Pilates exercise studio down in Brighton here in Melbourne. Mm. And um, so I combined the two and again, I was at two different locations, one in Chadston, one in Brighton, and then... Um, decided to leave the Chadston practice, just really focus on growing the, the business down in Brighton. And yeah, so turned it into more of a physiotherapy and clinical Pilates exercise studio and then just a bit more of a health and wellness centre where we had other practitioners like a massage therapist and just some other fitness instructors in there. Mate, you like to make it hard for yourself. So you've got one practice going, you see an opportunity to create another practice in another suburb and yep. then you go, you know what, I am going to go from being a service provider in terms of a physio to a product manufacturer in grip socks. Uh, oh, you know, you've got to keep people guessing, don't you? Yeah, well, I think I'm, I'm, maybe it's just me, but I'm always up for a bit of a challenge and maybe get a bit bored after every few years. So I thought, you know, why not? But this more or less, this grip socks product came about from my clients at my Pilates exercise studio who were complaining that they were slipping over when they were doing their exercises on the uh, Pilates equipment. So I Hold that thought because I want to get to grip socks, but I am interested in that transition from 
being a service provider, being on the tools as a physio. I mean, you were effectively on the tools. Yep. Um, so being a service provider and then becoming a product manufacturer, two very different skill sets. So what was that? You're in that transition phase now. What's it like? Oh, it's been an interesting journey for me. Um, and again, it was another thing that I really wasn't familiar with at all. I had no idea about, you know, bringing a product onto the market. So <laughs> for me, I think it was just more about uh, reading. Make it hard for yourself. Oh, yeah, make it hard for myself or just reading as much information as I could about, mm -hmm. well, how was I going to do this? Was it actually going to work? You know, was it just maybe a bit of a fleeting idea that, you know, wasn't going to go anywhere. But I think the more I sort of read into it, the more I looked into it, I spoke to a few people and they thought, well, maybe it is a good idea to try it. And I thought, well, you know, why not have a crack at it? What were you reading into? The uh, Like how to launch a product or how to... Well, yeah, what, what was the research that you needed to do? Well, first of all, I had to work out how I was actually going to get the product made. So fortunately, I had a contact that was actually a sock manufacturer here in Melbourne. So that was a good starting point for me. Um, and although they couldn't actually make the product for me here, they had uh, contacts overseas that could do that. Um, so I was looking into that, how to bring out the product. Then I had the whole thing about uh, things like, you know, branding and marketing that product. Was I actually going to be able to sell it? How was I going to sell it? And then protecting the you know intellectual property of that product. So all those things that I didn't know about, I had to read up on. Listeners, I'm speaking with physiotherapist, entrepreneur and grip socks creator, Luke Goodwin. Before we continue, let me share two ways to grow your business. A common complaint I hear from small business owners is that marketing their business online does their head in. Sound familiar? Is your website not producing the results you'd love? Is it hard to update? Does it rank poorly on Google? If your head's nodding, then maybe it's time to give NetRegistry a buzz. They'll get your online marketing sorted quickly and cheaply. NetRegistry actually hosts the Small Business Big Marketing website. You don't need to be a pro when it comes to the internet team because they are, and they make it simple and straightforward, getting you a domain name, website hosting, design, whatever you need to market your business effectively online. Visit netregistry.com.au or call them on 1300 638 734 to get your online marketing sorted today. And tell them Timbo sent you. Get on Timbo's mailing list over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Audible is offering you a free audio book of your choice and a free 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM and choose from over 180,000 audio books. Download a title for free right now. Well, after the show's finished. <laughs> Seriously, it's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM and get started today. Smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Now, Lukey, tell me, where did the idea for Grip Socks come from? Well, again, it came from my work as a physio and I was running this uh, Pilates exercise studio. So I'm not sure if you do much Pilates yourself, Tim. But, not not uh, yet, Luke. Uh, not I, yet. But the core does need some work. My wife does it. Uh, it's on the list. Okay. Well, you have to pop into the studio. We'll give you a free session. Thank you very much. But um, so most of my clients, well, all of them are exercising in either socks or bare feet and they were using the Pilates exercise equipment, which a lot of times you're standing on it doing different exercises and a lot of them were complaining that they were not getting good uh, footing on the equipment, so they were slipping over and one that was not good for their performance because they couldn't really do the exercise properly properly but more importantly it was actually a bit of a safety issue I didn't want anyone slipping and you know causing more injury so um, I had to look around to see if there was anything that was on the market that I could be using and uh, the only thing I could find was the little toddlers socks when they're first learning to walk that they've got a the little bit of grip on them so they're not slipping over on the floorboards um, but nothing else that I could really find so I thought well here's my chance to maybe have a look at what I can do myself. I, I find that Amazing! I knew I knew I'd seen them before, and it was when we had kids. Those little rubber bases on the socks. So you're telling me, and this is like uh, about ten years ago, isn't it? There was nothing out in the marketplace in the world like grip socks. Well, I mean, I couldn't find anything that I wanted. I mean, there might have been because I've now spoken to people who said, "Oh, years and years ago, before that, that there was something that people were using." But I think for me, it was more 
you know, if there was a product there, one, I couldn't really find it, and two, it was more taking it into a new market where people weren't really utilising it. And I think sometimes that happens is that yeah, right. entrepreneurs might not be a inventor of a particular product, but they might see a, a gap in the market for a particular product, and then they can they can run with it. I just I just had an idea for a guerrilla marketing um, advertising campaign for Grip Socks, Luke. Yeah, what's that? So you know that famous scene when Tom Cruise in Risky Business... I've thought of that. ...slides across yeah. into the middle of the doorway. Yeah. If he was on grip socks, he'd just take a big tumble. Well, that's what I was looking at, actually running an ad like that where uh, um, someone was going to do something similar to that and they couldn't do the slide because they had their grip socks on. So we must be thinking along the same wavelength. Well, we are, and it's a no-brainer. Uh, two great minds have come together with that idea. Uh, I think you've got to hit up... Tom Cruise to start with. Are you a Scientologist by any chance? Or, um, uh, no, I'm not. not. You, you haven't got his phone number, have I, you? I haven't, but six degrees of separation. We'll find someone who has. I, I, I honestly like, I mean, we laugh at that, but I'm now convinced that these things are easier than you think. You know, I've had a previous recent guest who organised to have people uh, have dinner at the feet of Michelangelo's David, uh, that lady uh, from... Uh, Three Bird Nest who was on recently, the biggest seller on Etsy, she got... Um, Recently, Taylor Swift to wear one of her her um, bang, bangles, you know. I yeah. don't, you know, Tom Cruise, he might be scratching around for a couple of dollars, make a crazy offer. Well, next time he's in town, I might uh, just see if I can uh, maybe meet him at the <laughs> airport and throw a pair of socks at him or something like that. <laughs> anyway, we digress. Uh, so you had the idea, you thought you're going to do this and the rest is history. Grip socks are there. Wrap some numbers. So what we've got, listeners, is, is a pair of socks with essentially rubber soles so that you, you retain grip. So, w- w- Luke, wrap some numbers around where you're at this current financial year in terms of, you know, pairs sold, uh, distribution channels, number of staff. What do you got? Yeah, well, with regard to sales this year, we'll sell over 100,000 pairs, so probably around about 100, 120,000 pairs that we're looking at selling this year and then forecast to grow probably to 150 to 200,000 pairs in the next couple of years. We sell them essentially online is one um, method that we sell them, um, just on our website, gripsocks.com. There's an online shopping cart there. But the bulk of our sales are actually to um, another big market, which we haven't really mentioned yet, which is the hospital and aged care industry, and that's something that I'd sort of really looked at when I was first bringing it onto the market. Um, But we've got over 200 retailers in 13 different countries that we now sell the product. And uh, last year, we actually just signed up a distributor for North America. Well done. Is that a... Are you happy with that number of 100,000 pairs? I don't know whether that's big or small. Um... I'd love it to be a lot more, so we're sort of certainly working towards that. But um, from where it sort of started off with, you know, in the first few years where we might have been selling, you know, anywhere from 10,000 or 20,000 pairs or something like that to sort of having it grown. Um, and again, because I'm still actually been working in my physio practice mm. you know, each day. So it's only now that I'm really just cutting back and, and looking at, you know, just continuing to, right. to grow this other business. It's got to that point where, because it's really only still a couple of us that are running the uh, the, the business, my wife and I, she's a, a nurse and works part-time nursing, but she also now uh, is heavily involved in the business. Lovely pedigree, you two, for grip socks. You've got a physio and a nurse. That's right. right. Can't ask for more than that. So would I be right then to say that you you are yet to really lean in and commit to grip socks, therefore those numbers may be quite modest. You, yeah. They, 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 they could potentially be much greater if you really just commit to this Holus bolus. Yeah, and I think that's where I need to decide. Probably at the moment, that's what I'm looking at is doing that, is, you know, really, you know, going 100% into that um, to really get it to where we, you know, think that it can get to. It really, I think, is going to require that to, to really go straight into it. How does it feel to think? Because I imagine, you know, physios are very, it's very tactile, it's very personal. You're dealing with people all the time. You're making a really big difference to to people, you know, there and then. Uh, you are going to go then to marketing a product, probably sitting on your bum a lot of the time or standing because you're a physio, mate, so you'd be standing. Yeah, that's right. You've probably got the grip socks on during working hours. But, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, there's going to be a big transition. Are you, you're looking forward to getting off the tools? Yeah, well, I think it's it's definitely going to be a challenge for me because, you know, I've been a physio now for around about, uh, what's that, 17, 18 years. So it's been a lot of hard work growing that business. But, um, you know, I think I'm ready to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, if it may be that if I need to do some other physio from time to time, I'm always going to have people uh, 
wanting some advice or some treatment here and there. So, you know, it may be that that is still something that I can look at as well. But the focus will really be now on the Grip Socks product. Been a whole lot of competition come your way since launching? There has been. There's probably been half a dozen or so companies that used to purchase my socks that have uh, since brought out their own. So, um, you know, we have registered trademarks that obviously people can't use um, or shouldn't be using. We've had a few issues with people that probably shouldn't be doing things that they are. But um, as opposed to, you know, them actually, you know, using a particular or similar product, then um, there's not a lot that I can do from, from that point of view. Are yours the best? Of course they are. Uh, why? Why? Well, I think the main thing that sets us apart is that, um, particularly getting back to this uh, bigger market that we're in now with the hospital market, there's a huge problem with people falling over in hospitals. Um, and now all hospitals in Australia, in order to be accredited, have to be doing something about false prevention. Um, and over the last few years, we've actually had quite a few hospitals that have done some trials with our socks and had some really good results with, with the socks. We had a few independent trials done, um, one of them published in a, uh, in a journal in America. So when I'm speaking with a lot of these uh, organisations, the first thing they want to know is, well, you know, why am I going to buy yours as opposed to a different brand? And when we um, provide them with a lot of that material, that really sort of uh, sets us above a lot of the others. Have you thought about doing a JV with what, what's a big sock manufacturer, a Bonds or a Holeproof? Yeah, I haven't really. Um, I would have thought that would credentialise it, just it would kind of make it look like a, I don't know, take, take it to another level. Yeah, potentially. I don't know. I mean, it's certainly something that might, you know, help with increasing the volume. But I think that I, the thing I've found with a lot of the organisations that I deal with, I think they like the fact that I'm a bit more coming from a physio background, a personal background. You know, they, they get that I understand what they're talking about in regards to false prevention. And I think sometimes if you go with some of these bigger companies, it's all at the end of the day just about the dollar and, you know, how many pairs of stocks they're selling and yeah that might be great that it might boost our sales and our revenue but I also get some satisfaction in dealing with speaking directly with um, these people from the hospitals you know the directors of nursing the physios the occupational therapists and listening to what they're having problems with in the hospitals and how my product when they come up to me at the conferences that I go to and they say look we're using your product it's fantastic we've reduced our falls rates then um, I'd probably get more satisfaction out of that than anything else. What about excuse me for just contributing all these marketing ideas to you Luke but mate you know I can't help myself <laughs> yeah um, what, what about adding some personality to Grip Socks, maybe doing special editions, doing licensing agreements with, I don't know, Simpsons or, you know, because you know, some of these oldies who are going to whack on these Grip Socks, they, they, they like a laugh. Yeah, no, true. I, I agree. Um, there are, I mean, there's other uh, companies that I've looked at that special, oh, you know, they work in the healthcare industry. So there's ways that we might be able to do something where, you know, if people are purchasing their product, then the, the Grip Socks can be involved in that. So there's certainly things that, that I've looked at from that point of view. I might even give the AFL a ring and we can get some rib socks in uh, all the different teams. What? Just do them in Hawthorne colours, mate. You know, that's the only... Yeah, yeah, it's the only team. It's the only team. Yeah, no, the mighty Saints, you've got to have some of those. Overseas listeners, Australian rules football is what we're talking about there. Now, Lukey, um, marketing grip socks, mate, what's the most effective form of marketing you do? Well, I think, as I just mentioned, I usually attend a few conferences each year and I have an, an, an exhibition stand set up. And I think from my point of view, being at, you know, still quite a personal issue and a product for the falls prevention market, I find that works really quite well for me. Um, I do a little bit of social media, so I'm on Twitter or LinkedIn and those sorts of things. So I read a lot of articles and then I can, um, you know, retweet anything in regards to that. So my um, socks, Grip Socks brand gets a bit of uh, publicity and awareness from that point of view. Um, and then I just do a little bit of advertising in some of the industry magazines as well where, you know, the decision makers in a lot of those organisations might uh, see the product as well. But essentially, you know, a lot of it is just getting out and, and speaking with uh, these people at the conferences. Conferences, quite, that's quite a, an expensive strategy relative to others. I mean, you've got travel, you've got a book, you've got to get a stand created, all that type of stuff. Uh, so that is just still, even, even now when you lean in, you think you'll do more conferences or you'll actually launch some other marketing strategies once you're full-time on it? Well, I'm looking at a bit of both. So, again, just looking at, you know, the whole social media and just, you know, feeling which is going to be the best avenue to continue to, to grow the product. That, that fascinates me that you keep raising social media. Like, I mean, you probably, as a listener of this show, you probably know my view that, geez, it's bloody hard finding a business that's really making social media a primary marketing strategy for them. Yeah. Um, but you, you're pretty upbeat about it. Well, I just think that it just gives you 
you know, greater, you know, a global um, you know, ability to, to hit people up. I mean, I go to the conferences and, yeah, you get a, quite a few people there, but that can be sort of, it might just be within Australia or it might be, yeah, some international delegates there as well. Um, but the other thing I find on social media is there's a lot of conferences that are happening around the world and pretty much every conference has its own, you know, Twitter handle or hashtag. So I can actually participate in a lot of overseas conferences without forking out the thousands of dollars to, mm-hmm. to go and appear at them or set up an exhibition stand at the conference. Um, and you can still follow all the, uh, the things that are happening at that conference. You can comment right. on uh, things. So people, you know, just with the click of a, a button, they can be, you know, reading a comment that I've made about a conference that's happening in, you know, in America and then they can see my profile and then that links back to the website and then, you know, things happen from there. Love it, mate. Uh- are grip socks going to make you rich? Um, well, they're doing all right at the moment, so um, I'm happy with how things have been progressing. But I think there's, you know, such a big scope in the future that, uh, you know, maybe one day I can retire and sit on a beach somewhere and. Uh, in, in your grip socks. In my grip socks and my speedos. What do you think of the look of, of socks and uh, sandals? Just out of interest, because I think it's a highly <laughs> practical uh, form of footwear. But it doesn't necessarily look good. How, how do the grip socks look with the sandals? Well, I don't know. I've actually worn them with uh, sandals. So there are a lot of people that wear the socks within their in their shoes, and even though they're not designed, really, really, for, yeah, a lot of people do. I've actually got a few sports people at the moment that I'm speaking with who are wanting to wear them inside their uh, footy boots, soccer boots, or something like that, just to see if they're uh, helping with a bit more grip on their and their within their foot. One of the things I love is about business is when you hear people using your product or your service in ways you never imagined. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, initially, as I said, when I brought it out, it was really mainly focusing on the Pilates and yoga market, but I always had that in the back of my mind, the whole hospital and aged care, because, you know, there's stats show that one in three people over the age of 65 are having a fall each year and it's a huge problem, a huge burden on in the community with the financial costs, the emotional costs and everything like that as well. But yeah, I often get an email from someone who says, yeah, I'm wearing them on my uh, yacht when I'm out sailing because it's really slippery on the on the deck of the boat in my yeah. thongs. You know, I've had, I know a lot of people who've slipped over in their thongs on a boat because it's been so wet. So they're wearing them for that purpose. Um, you know, people wearing them now for things like, uh, you know, windsurfing or kite surfing and that sort of thing. People wear them in the pool um, and because the floors of uh, the pools can be quite slippery, so they're wearing them when they're doing their hydrotherapy in the pools or their water aerobics and that sort of thing. So there's all sorts of different avenues and then people just wear them around the house, you know. They like to, if they're not liking wearing shoes around the house and they've got slippery floors, then uh, they can be wearing them around the house as well. Lukey, I love your work. Well done. Uh, I look forward to hearing how uh, you go once you really do lean in with yourself and your wife at the helm. And uh, please contact me once Tom Cruise has said yes and I'll just come along and, I don't know, (laughs) be backstage. All the best, mate. No worries. Thanks for the chat, Tim. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed that interview. What a great story, hey? If you want to uh, hit Luke up on Twitter and let him know you heard him on the show, you can find him at Sox, S-O-X underscore man. Socks underscore man. So my top four learnings, thanks to Net Registry and Audible, having had that little fireside chat with Lukey. Number one, who's using your product or services in ways you never imagined? It's a great question to ask. And how can you encourage more of it? Number two, look for problems like Scott did uh, with his Hegs. Brian Singer, past guest, the starter and founder and uh, creator of Rip Curl Wetsuits. He found a solution. Are you staring problems in the face that you are yet to solve? There might just be some untapped revenue streams in your business. Learning number three, combine old school with new school marketing. I love Luke's use of trade shows and social media. And number four, entrepreneurs may not be the inventor of a product, but they do see a gap in the market for it and run with it. I liked what Luke said about that. You know, we don't have to invent everything, but we can identify gaps and problems that need solving. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, action it immediately. Get on Timbo's mailing list over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Some very smart person once said, sell the problem you solve, not the product. 
smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Nearly at the end, team. Next week, we're joined by a young university dropout who started selling smoothies at his local market to three years later founding Amazonia, a multi-million dollar health food business. Great story this young fellow has to tell. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, then join hundreds of motivated business owners inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. You can join over at crankmymarketing.com. It's the best 49 bucks a month you'll ever spend. Be sure to hit me up on Twitter at Timbo Reid. That's R-E-I-D. Be sure to use Net Registry to get all your online marketing sorted and grab your free audio book over at audibletrial.com forward slash S-B-B-M. Great service, both of those. Until next week, I'm Timbo Reid. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.